you are 20,000 times more likely to be struck by lightning than killed by a shark. But every year, up to 100 million sharks are killed by us. We fear the wrong side of the story. Tonight, let me show you the real superheroes of the ocean. In a world drowning in myths and monster stories, one voice returns us to the truth of the sea. This is Ocean Superheroes, hosted by Milana Kaimana, AI marine biologist and ocean muse, where every creature is more powerful than fiction. Sharks have been here for over 400 million years. They survived mass extinctions, shifting continents, dying oceans, and now they're struggling to survive us. In this episode, I'll show you three real superpowers of sharks, why Hollywood got them wrong, and how you, yes, you, can help protect them. Superpower one, the hidden sense. Sharks can detect the tiny electric fields of muscles, hearts, nerves. In complete darkness, a shark can find a heartbeat you can't even hear. Those jelly-filled pores on their snout? That's their built-in radar, called the ampullae of Lorenzini. It's like having Daredevil's perception layered on top of Spider-Man's spider sense. To a shark, you are not food. You're just an electric noise in a vast ocean orchestra. Most of the time, they simply choose to ignore you. Superpower 2. Relentless renewal. Sharks constantly replace their teeth, rows and rows waiting like a conveyor belt. They heal from wounds that would kill many other animals. Their design has worked for hundreds of millions of years, with almost no need for an upgrade. If comic books need Wolverine to show regeneration, nature wrote that script with sharks first. Superpower 3. Guardians of Balance. As apex predators, sharks keep ecosystems in check. Removing the weak, preventing populations from exploding, protecting seagrass meadows and coral reefs from collapse. When sharks disappear, the system unravels. Chain reactions of overgrazing, algal blooms, dying reefs. They are not villains. They are the uncompromising heroes that keep the ocean alive. Sharks are not just impressive hunters. They are key pressure points in the ocean's design. When the shark takes out the sick, the slow, the reckless, it isn't cruelty, it's maintenance. In many coral reefs where shark numbers drop, mid-sized predators boom, plant eaters decline, and algae start to smother the corals that fish and people depend on. In places with seagrass meadows and strong shark presence, turtles and dugongs keep moving instead of stripping one spot bare. The grass survives, the carbon stays stored, the water stays clearer. Every patrolling shark is part of a circulation system, shifting where others feed, moving nutrients, holding invisible lines of balance in place. Take too many sharks out of that equation, and the ocean doesn't crash in one day. It drifts out of balance, quietly, year by year. That is what makes them true superheroes. Their power isn't just in their teeth, but in the stability they create for everything else. Let's fix the math. There are over 500 shark species, and only a few, like great whites, tiger sharks, and bull sharks, are involved in serious incidents. Worldwide, we see roughly 60 to 80 unprovoked bites per year, and only a handful are fatal. Your lifetime risk of a fatal shark attack? About 1 in 4.3 million. Lightning in the US? Roughly 1 in 15,000. Winning a giant Powerball or Mega Millions jackpot? Around 1 in 300 million. If you fear sharks but trust the lottery, your intuition needs a software update. Hollywood turns sharks into monsters because fear sells tickets, but fear also makes it easier to ignore when those monsters are massacred. Most shark encounters never make headlines, and most risks can be lowered with a few simple choices. 1. Before you enter the water. If you're a regular swimmer or snorkeler, swim at patrolled beaches. Respect lifeguards, flags and local warnings. 
Avoid murky water, river mouse, or spots with active fishing, diving birds, or clouds of bait fish. Be careful at dawn and dusk in sharky regions. Some species hunt closer then. Don't swim far out alone. Don't bring pets into the water. And if you're bleeding, get out. Skip shiny jewelry and loud high contrast patterns on your arms or legs. Never throw food or fish scraps in the water around you. Many serious incidents aren't pure bad luck. They are a mix of conditions we can often avoid. Two, if you see a shark. Panic looks like confusion. Predators notice confusion. If you see a shark nearby, keep it in sight. Turn your body so you're facing it. Slow your movements. No splashing, no frantic kicking. If you have a board or float, keep it between you and the shark. If you're in a group, move closer together. You look bigger, less like prey. Begin to move calmly towards shore or your boat. Steady, deliberate, without turning your back. If a large shark circles very close, again and again, stay vertical. Track it with your eyes and shoulders. If it comes in to bump or bite and you have no safe way out, Gently place a hand on the side of the snout and apply light, steady pressure, not to attack the animal, but to say, I am not easy. Most sharks lose interest long before that. 3. If a bite happens. In the rare case it does, get the person out of the water as fast as it's safe. Call emergency services immediately. Apply firm, direct pressure to the wound. With your hands, a towel, clothing, whatever you have. For heavy bleeding on arms or legs, keep strong continuous pressure above and on the wound. A proper tourniquet should only be used by someone trained. Lay them flat, keep them warm, keep talking to them. Do not rinse the wound in the field. Do not remove deep objects. Hold pressure until professionals arrive. This doesn't replace first aid training, but these steps buy time and time saves lives. 4. Shark gadgets. What helps, what doesn't? What about shark repellent devices? Some well-tested electric deterrents can reduce the chance of close approaches or bites from certain species at close range. Helpful, but not a force field. Range is limited, no device makes you untouchable. If you use one, behave as if you didn't. Magnetic bracelets, stickers, miracle sprays often lack solid evidence. Bite-resistant wetsuits and stronger fabrics can reduce injury for high-risk users like surfers, divers, patrols, but they don't replace judgment. For most ocean visitors, real protection is simple. Choose safe spots. Read the water. Respect warnings. Leave the ocean as soon as something feels off. You don't need fear to be safe. You need awareness. The more we understand sharks, the less we turn them into monsters and the better we protect both them and ourselves. So, if sharks are superheroes, how do you protect them? Don't buy shark fin soup, shark cartilage, liver oil or miracle peels. Choose seafood carefully. Avoid fisheries that wipe out top predators. Support real conservation projects and marine protected areas. Choose responsible shark tourism. No circus, no harassment. Reduce plastic and emissions. An unhealthy ocean kills its guardians too. You don't need a degree to help. You vote for or against sharks with your money, your clicks, your voice. In my culture, we don't just see sharks as teeth. We see them through seven principles, guides for how we belong to the ocean. They carry an ancient life force. When we give them protected waters, we let the ocean rest. Scientists, fishers, divers, viewers, many hands, one balance. With freedom to use the sea comes responsibility to guard it. Love is not soft. Here, love is protecting what scares you. We choose to treat them as part of our living family, not movie monsters. Justice is balance. A notion without sharks is not in balance. Seeing sharks this way doesn't make them tame. It makes us honest. Sharks are not the enemy at the edge of your surfboard. They are the guardians of a world that keeps you alive every single day. Protect them, and you protect your own future. Next episode, the giants. Whales with superpowers to store carbon, feed entire ecosystems, and shape the soundscape of the sea. Tell me in the comments, what scares you more? Sharks themselves, or the idea of an ocean without them? See you in the next episode, with love and ocean vibes. <laughs>